Hey, it's Stevie GB here. Welcome to another episode of Suffocating in Suburbia. I hope you enjoyed our last few episodes. This is really fun. I'm enjoying this podcast thing I'm doing. Uh, today I'm going to talk about local acts that are trying to make it on Long Island that are singing, well, not original tunes, that's even harder, but uh, cover tunes by other artists, and they do tributes to other artists. I'll give you an example. Uh, Willie Sacco, a good friend of mine, Wild Willie, does a tribute to Barry Manilow, Tom Jones, and Engelbert Humperdinck. Yeah, if you're under 30, you're like, who? But you know, these acts were very popular back in the 60s and 70s. And uh, he, he does it. He does it at restaurants. It's like a dinner show. It's a tough business. But he's doing it all over Long Island. This is also pre pandemic and post pandemic. We're pretending the pandemic never happened here. There's another guy. There's a couple of guys. I don't even know their names that do Neil Diamond. You know, can you imagine that? And this isn't really this isn't like karaoke. These are like good singers. There's another lady, uh, Pamela Kraft, who does Cher and other acts. There's another lady who does Cher, very popular. There's a guy who does Sinatra. I mean, this is a big thing, and they're like dinner shows. So you know, it makes me wonder, like, is this a good form of entertainment? Of course, Steve Mitchell does Elvis, Elvis Presley. There are still Elvis impersonators out there. And, you know, it seems cheesy, hacky, whatever you want to call it. But you got to give it to these folks. They're trying. They're living a dream. A lot of them are in a little advanced age. And maybe they tried to make it as real professional. I'm not saying they're not professional, but here they are. They're out there in the world, suffocating in suburbia, trying to make it happen at Sergio's and Anthony's Italian Bistro. And do they get listened to? I mean, it's not like comedy. Comedy's hard because people have to listen. But when these folks are singing music, do people have to listen? Or do they just like eating their penne, their $9.99 penne, all, all you can eat penne night while someone's singing Sweet Caroline in the background? And they're eating, they're like, ba, ba, ba. Times never seem so good. So good. So good. So good. Yeah, how's the pasta? It's so good. So good. So good. I don't know. It's borderline sad to me. But it is what it is. Now, today's guest I have today is a, a woman who I know pretty well. Um, she met me while I was doing a comedy show at a place called The Mousetrap in Amityville. And uh, she had the loudest laugh in the place. It was an off night. There weren't that many people there and not many people were paying attention. It was basically a bar show. But she was laughing loud. And I went over there after the show. I was like, hi and she was happy to see me and i was happy to see her and um we've been friends ever since i've been fortunate to have her join my group called the retirement village people we're a parody band uh, and she's one of the singers her real name is uh, i won't say her real name but her stage name is anita starlight very cute but when she's part of the retirement village people we call her Anita Knapp. See what I did there? So without further ado, I'd like to bring her on. Now, just for the record, I just notified her about 15 minutes ago if she's available to do my podcast. So this is pretty much kind of a random. Should I do that? Should I do like random podcasts? Like don't even schedule it. Just hit them and say, come on, you're on my podcast right now suffocating in suburbia. That's what we're all doing. Anyway, it's not like we're doing anything. We're sitting home. You might as well come on my podcast. Well, that's what I did to Anita. <laughs> and here she is Anita Bloomfield Starlight Nap, whatever you want to call her. <laughs> and you woke me up from a nap. How about that? She always she always is Anita Nap, I guess. <laughs> This is my first podcast sabotage. I've never done this. I've given Anita about what, 12 minutes notice? Yes. Yeah. And, how about that? Yeah. And she had to go put on her face and put on a top. And I told her yeah. she could do a topless, but you know, 
Yeah, it's but not I, that kind I, of I show get yet. Say that again. I get paid for that. Yeah, she gets paid for that. That's yeah, right. and I know you know you're a broke comedian, so you don't have any money to pay me. So I am broke. I put on. I am broke. That's all right. <laughs> so how are you, Anita? Uh, yeah, you know, like you, I'm surviving. You know, doing mm. my thing. I. What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? We're not. Oh, I, by the way, one of the rules of my podcast is we don't talk about that word that yes. begins with a C, the C word, COVID. Be careful. Oh, okay. Or or the other C word, conservative, which are both both worse than the the, the C word you were thinking about. Because <laughs> if you're a COVID conservative, that's like really bad these days. But yeah, this isn't I, political I, I, either. It's not I political. What? It's not political. It what what the purpose of my show is is I'm trying to inspire people in the suburbs to tell me about how you get out of that what I call suffocating in the suburbs because we're like all oh, oh, there's nothing to do. We gotta go to the mall again. We gotta go to big lots. We gotta go to Walmart. Now, well, I don't do any of those. Oh, that's Actually, good. What I've been doing is if if you follow me on Facebook at all. I, I go to local little beach. It's technically not really a beach, but a little area in between the canals on the South Shore in Massapequa. And I do that just about every single day. Wow. And, you know, it's winter time, but, you know, uh, as long as the sun is, I mean, I'll even go, I'll go as long as it's not raining. And you'd be surprised how many people go. You just pull up in your car, just sit there, just look at the water. And you watch, you know, the waterfowl, the ducks, the, the swans, you know, the even even the annoying seagulls. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, it's very <clears throat> it's just very calming, and it just it just makes you feel like yeah, everything's normal, same old stuff, you know. Uh, and then I have to say that because um, I'm I'm by myself, I uh, I have been going out. I go out just about every night and uh, I go out for a drink and dinner. And I usually try to go someplace that has music, a si singers or um, jazz. I go to two nights of jazz on wow. Sunday and tonight I'm going uh, on Wednesday. And I just find, you know, th there's that whole little group of, of you know, my music family. Yeah. And I love it, you know, and, and I'll come home, I don't, you know, I'll come home by nine o'clock, whatever, watch a little stuff on the on the tube. If there's nothing good on good old family feud is my go to thing. If <laughs> that's, on, that's on all day, every day, 24 hours oh, yeah. a day. You gotta seems. love Steve Harvey. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, that guy is a riot. Now there's someone that came up from he, he was living in his car at one point. Now look at yeah, him. He's got yeah. more money than, you know, I give him a lot of credit. A they were all of, living in their car. I heard that story about Jewel living in her car and, you know, oh, yeah. they, they live in their car for a week. These people, I don't <laughs> believe it. I, I have, I have doubts. <clears throat> but you have anyway, that was, it's funny you, you mentioned that because that Anita, that was the subject. That's what I started out. You didn't hear my little opening monologue, but what? basically that's what I was talking about. How on Long Island in any suburban town, there's a lot of entertainment from people that do like tribute acts, you know, yes. Barbara Streisand, there's Neil Diamond, there's Barry, I talked about Wild Willie doing Barry Manilow, Tom yeah. oh, Jones, Elvis, oh Humperdinck, the Elvis Presley by Steve Mitchell, and, Steve and Mitchell people go to these little restaurants and bistros and, and they enjoy it. And it's, you know, it's a form of entertainment that, you know, I don't think it gets the proper recognition it deserves, you know, and it's right. fun. I mean, these may not be big, you know, super fancy places where you're paying a lot of money. But I will tell you, the entertainment just floating around here on Long Island is incredible. Yeah. Incredible. You know, there's, there's one place in particular I'm not going to mention, but they have different tribute people all the time. And the level of performance and talent that is in those people, I mean, uh, it, it's, it's wonderful. It's right. wonderful just to be able to pop in and, and, and do that and see that and be entertained. Yeah, that's great. Now, what, what, how did you get started in that? Did you uh, always, you were always, you were in community theater. I know that. And uh, yeah. you've always been a singer and you're certainly a ham. So you know how to play it up and you always get the audience. I love having you on my shows. I've had you on a lot of my shows and 
I always know that Anita's gonna, you know, get that audience happy and going. And I remember we did a show at Governor's and you opened it and right off the bat, you got them. And I, I recognize that as a performer. And, and I love that about you is you know how to get the audience and you have a good time. Well, you know what it is? It's honestly, I think to me, it's not something I ever learned. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, I think it's just me, you know, right. uh, I love to communicate with people. I love to joke around, you know, uh, I could be feeling horrible inside when I leave my house, I could, you know, but when I refer to it as being out in the wild, <laughs> when I'm out in the wild, everybody is game for me. Okay. And it's just, um, what did my late husband used to say? He said, you know, Anita, you're a little, oh, I'm trying, I'm trying to, I'm having a brain. There, there was a word he, he used to describe. He says, you know, not everybody can deal with that, <laughs> you know, because like I'm a little, <laughs> you know, um, I've always had a very hearty laugh. Yes. And I, I know, know that's why comedians like yourself love when I come to their shows. The late, great John Panette, one of my favorite stories oh, to yeah. tell. I had seen him on the big stage at Governor's with some friends of mine and was already a fan from listening to him on, on Sirius Radio. And I'm enjoying myself laughing. And from the stage, John Panette points me out <clears throat> and he goes, hey, Randy, you got a good laugh. I should take you on the road with me. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that sounds like John Panette. Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I do. You know, like my father, my father used to be able to imitate and, and do. Uh, so I definitely have uh, my, my dad's um, ability to do that. But I, you know, it's just for me, it's just part of my personality. And, um, you know, I'll, uh, not, nothing is off the table as, you know, I was in, the, in a supermarket a couple months ago, you know, not well, I've been there again since, but this one instance, and someone was pushing a kid in the cart in the cart, and the kid is crying and carrying on. And, you know, most people are like, oh, God, I got the kid to shut up, you know. And I know what that's like when you have a child that's crying. You know, it's, it's not fun for mommy either. So mm -hmm. I, I went past them, and then, bing, my brain went into gear, and I backed up, and I went over to the little kid, put my face, and right away, they're like, eh, what? you know, because they're easily distracted. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, honey, I know the prices in here make me want to cry too. <laughs> and then I just turned and put my cart, just left and everybody laughed, kids stopped crying. Everybody was happy. And you know what? You made their day because they went home <laughs> and they talked about it. They said, oh, this lady in the store, this crazy lady. <laughs> but that's good. Yeah. That's good. You're spreading your joy and that's, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And, yeah. It, and it comes back to me, you know, because yeah. it's like, ah. <laughs> Absolutely. You had fun. They had fun. You know, it's uh, it's a great thing. It's inspiring, you know, and that's uh, I, I think... told you about the donut, the donut shop thing with the cops, didn't I? I don't know. Did you? That doesn't sound familiar. OK, you got time? Yeah, sure. We got ten All right. minutes. OK, uh, this is another little episode of being out in the wild. Okay. Uh, this was a couple of years ago. I was driving down Hitsville Road with a girlfriend of mine. Oh, and we were looking to go to this uh, one little local pub and there's a Dunkin' Donuts and there's two police cars there. Now, they, they weren't there on a call. They were just there like out, out in front. And I said, oh, oh, I got and my girlfriend's going, don't, don't, we're going to get arrested. I said, shut up. Don't worry about it. <laughs> I pull up next to the cops. It was summertime. I put my window down right away. The, the two of them are like, can we help you? And I pointed to them. And then I pointed up at the Dunkin' Donuts and I pointed to them and I went, <laughs> no, this is so wrong. You're playing into the stereotype. No, park oh. in the back, park in the back. What are you doing out here? So the one cop, he says, well, I'm getting ready to pop the trunk. We're going to fill it on up in a few minutes. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and that was, I just had to say, you know, what are you doing? Come on. So uh, I, I said great. to them, listen, thank you guys so much for keeping everybody safe. I said, oh, and by the way, could you just get that powdered sugar off your blue? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. Because you see, even I, I'm sure they were very happy to have a laugh I that day. You know? 
they loved it. They, I'll they tell you a crying. great story. Once I got, I was driving home from uh, a comedy show at the brokerage and I didn't realize I had my brights on. I was on Southern State Parkway. I had my oh. brights on and a cop pulled me over and he says, uh, you know, you realize you had your brights on? I said, no. He says, were you drinking tonight? I don't know why they think having your brights on means you're drinking. I said, no. He says, where are you coming from? I said, the comedy club. He said, oh, what are you doing there? I said, I'm a comedian. And all of a sudden, his whole demeanor changed. He goes, oh, you're a comedian? I'm like, yeah. He says, how long have you been doing comedy? I said, I don't know. How long have you been a cop? <laughs> and he laughed and he said, you know what? I'll let you go. I'm not going to give you a ticket or anything. And I, I believe you not didn't drink. And he was like so nice to me at that point. But it was uh-huh. it was fun to change his attitude from yeah. uh, being the cop to being a yeah. person, you know. <laughs> so uh, and I guess I took a chance there. But, you know, it's all right. It was, yeah, it was com- fun. Let me tell you, comedy speaks to every language. Mm hmm every language every you comedy cuts through everything i think so yes yes like music to me comedy heals music heals um it's it's all and we need that we need more of that absolutely and you know let me i want to ask you this like as a comedian i was saying this in the beginning too comedy needs attention when i go to a, a an audience a restaurant or com- any comedy club is easier because they're yes. for comedy but when they're not there for a comedian, and that happens a lot, it's very difficult for me when they're chattering and talking and not paying attention. With music, that's a common thing. You know, they're, you know, your background, you know, does that, right. does that bother you at all? Or do you feel like this is what it is and you deal with it? When I'm entertaining in a restaurant, and no, actually, it doesn't really bother me. I'll tell you what it does for me. I still make my connections with that certain group i may not connect with everybody at the same time right but i will connect with everybody at a different time eventually eventually you get them all (laughs) yeah and uh and there's always going to be those few that you know are uh, glued in more than others but to tell you the truth what it does for me does it make me feel insignificant doesn't make me feel like oh they're not paying attention to me Right. It makes me relax. I relax because I don't feel like mm, the bright lights are shining on you. Oh my god! Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I and then that's when I have a tendency to kind of go through my repertoire and pull out things that I maybe haven't sung this in six years, and I'm oh, do I try this out? And I also peruse the audience, you know, age wise, and I, you know, I try to do songs for different generations and stuff like that, so I could communicate with everybody (laughs) this happened recently this happened within the last two and a half three months i was doing a restaurant you know nice nice place um not a lot of young 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 people you know and there was a woman there she with her grandson and i think he was like uh 16 or something and uh and talking to them at a little bit of a break. And and she was saying, oh, he really, you know. So I said, oh, I said to him, is there something, you know, I could sing for you? And oh, you know, he likes rock and roll, you know. So I said, oh, really? I said, you like Led Zeppelin? And he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, I've heard of them. (laughs) Oh, Zeppelin. I got permission. I went to the manager of the restaurant and I got permission to, because this is not a song you would do in a restaurant. And I wanted to get permission to do a hard hitting rock song, you know, for the and a guy told me it was okay. And I did Zeppelin's rock and roll. Wow. Yeah. Been a long time since a rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> You're making my dog bark. With all the wah, 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 you know, oh my God. The kid was blown away. The mother came in a couple weeks later and she said, oh my son, had a blast she said (laughs) he couldn't believe and another guy came in and he said i i was just coming to pick up takeout food and you're doing rock and roll man he goes that was awesome (laughs) (laughs) that's great that's a great story oh god you know i can't remember the last time i was in a venue where i could sing that song you know i know you're going from streisand and celine dion to led zeppelin i mean that's pretty much switching the channel right there but that's great around and I tell people I sing everything from um 
Marilyn Monroe to Madonna and a little out there in between, you know, right, 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 right. <laughs> I can surprise yeah. you. <laughs> well, that's good. Well, you do. You're very entertaining. I think you have a wonderful voice and uh, oh, thank I you, love Steve. having you as a friend and as an entertainer in my uh, my band, the Retirement Village People, which we will be back. And I'm the youngest one in the group. <clears throat> are you? Yeah, you probably are. I don't know. I, I'm not. I'm not counting age. Well, no, but, uh, <laughs> it doesn't matter. But uh, we have a great little group there. We're doing the parody songs, and I want to write some originals. And we're gonna yeah. we're gonna take the country by storm. Well, maybe the community centers by storm. Yes. Maybe, not the, <laughs> maybe not the whole country, but certainly the 55 and over set. Exactly. Exactly. And, uh, they we they love it. it. We just want to have fun. Girls just want to have fun. Absolutely. This and girl does. Too. You do Cindy <laughs> Lauper? Uh, I think I've only done one of her songs. I'm trying to think which one it was. I can't even remember. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Oh. Yeah. But I know. <laughs> just want to have fun. Oh, oh just want to have fun. That's all they really want. <laughs> she's cute she's adorable i don't know about now she's a little scary looking now but she was yeah, adorable. crazy yeah <laughs> what happens? listen anita i gotta run okay thank you so much for coming on and uh this will this will be this is pre-recorded folks so when you see it it means i did it before and it's on this is the way pre -re they they know right they know how it works i think they know what a record i think, they know. I think yeah. they know so it's not live you're not seeing it now because it's not on now it's going to be on at a later time later yes Stevie, Anita. it's an honor it's an honor for me i'm always a oh. when people say they compliment my voice and and to be brought into a, a a comedy group i mean i can't tell you how much i'm the one that's honored and i thank oh. you Pleasure to have you. And you know, we're, we're a great group. I mean, I hope we never end up like uh, fighting groups like, I don't know, like Van Halen or the Who or whoever they were that hated each other. Yeah, I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't even want to that. know about that stuff, you know, because ah, no, know well, you cool. are cranky too, you know, so. <laughs> cranky. cranky and Monty belligerent, cranky and belligerent. Isn't Joe great? Joe is incredible, isn't he? He's amazing. And Les That's Deegan, amazing. Les Deegan is known as Les Young because he's not. Les Young. That's new. I hadn't heard that. Yeah, we have Les Young. We have Monty Belligerent, Cranky Carmichael, Anita, Anita Knapp, and Les Young. I love it. The retirement village that. people. We work great together. You know, there's no egos. There's no, we're all right. just enjoying each other and, and, and enjoying each other's talents and yeah. enjoying what we do, you know. And, and let me tell you, there's not, when you make other people laugh, you know, the, before all this stuff started, you know, I, I, I would sing at different senior centers and stuff like that. And I used to actually feel guilty getting paid because I would get so much more out of it. Right. I felt I would get so much back watching these people appreciate. I never feel guilty people. getting paid. Never. Huh? <laughs> I never feel guilty getting paid. <laughs> it's never had yet to happen. Yeah. Yeah, it's all right. Listen, Anita, I got to run. Thank you so much for doing this uh, podcast sabotage with the 10 minutes notice. That's and, all right. Uh, I maybe get my makeup on and get dressed. <laughs> good morning at one o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, well, come how on. about that? How about that? <laughs> Anita Starlight, I will put her website up and you'll be able to, uh, you have a website, right? You'll be able to yes. watch her. Yes, I have anitastarlight.com. Okay, AnitaStarlight.com. Go and see her perform. She's wonderful. And of course, you will see her as part of the Retirement Village people very soon. Ciao, Bella. Ciao, Bella. <laughs>